The Russian aviation market has been hit hard due to Western sanctions following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Now, unable to easily access Western planes and their vital parts, the country has turned to developing and ramping up production of its own aircraft. One of the aircrafts Russia has been focusing on is the Yavkolev MC-21 narrow-body jet. This modern jet has shown a lot of early promise and competes favorably against its Airbus and Boeing counterparts. Now, some analysts are arguing that every Russian airline would beg for the MC-21. Here's why. You see, for a rather long time, Russia had mostly depended on the West for its aircrafts, as well as the development of parts for even Russia's own domestically produced aircraft. This changed in 2022 when the West basically shut Russia out of its economies, meaning Russia has been forced to achieve independence from the West in various sectors, including the aviation sector. However, even before the sanctions, Russia had long been trying to develop commercial airliners. In 2007, the Yakovlev Design Bureau, which is under Russia's state-owned aviation giant Rostec, began developing a narrow-body aircraft with the intention of replacing their aged and outdated Tupolev narrow bodies. The aircraft was initially meant to be titled the Yak-242, but was renamed the Yakovlev MS-21 following domestic certification in 2016, although it's been marketed to the West as the MC-21. Two variants of the aircraft were produced, the MC-21-200 and the MC-21-300. And on June 8, 2016, the MC-21-300 was finally rolled out in Irkutsk, Siberia, and became one of the first aircrafts to use out-of-autoclave composite manufacturing for its wings. Despite having its maiden flight on the 28th of May 2017, the MC-21 is yet to be introduced as of March 2024. This has been caused by a combination of earlier Russian protection, as well as the sanctions placed by the West on the Irkut Corporation, now known as the Yakovlev Corporation, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Both of these actions have made it difficult to access critical Western suppliers and led to a pushback of the introduction date of the aircraft. Despite this, Russia has continued to push forwards with its goals of aviation independence and President Vladimir Putin has since revealed plans to build at least 1,000 locally made aircrafts by 2030. So far, over $10 billion has been spent on the MC-21 program. However, only a handful of MC-21s have been built. The aircraft does have a relatively large order book of over 300, mostly from Russian carriers. But are these aircrafts really any good? The MC-21 is an innovative aircraft. It is the only airliner with a carbon fiber wing box made with resin-infused dry fiber, which is cured in an oven out of autoclave. The composite fins and wing box added to its high aspect ratio wing also gives the aircraft unique aerodynamic qualities which help boost efficiency. Its fuselage also mostly comprises lightweight aluminium lithium alloy which helps reduce fuel burn due to its reduced weight. There are currently two variants of the MC-21, the smaller MC-21-200 which is expected to come with anywhere between 132 and 165 seats, depending on the seating configuration. And the larger variant, the MC-21-300, which is expected to seat anywhere between 163 to 211 passengers, again depending on the seating configuration. Due to its size, seating capacity and reported range of around 3,500 nautical miles, the proposed MC-21-200 is expected to compete against Airbus A319 NEO and Boeing's MAX 7. And with a range of around 3,200 nautical miles and a seating capacity of around 211 passengers, the MC-21300 is Russia's closest response to Airbus's A320 or Boeing's 737 MAX 9 in the mid-market segment. The MC-21 is also slightly wider and longer than both aircrafts, allowing for more space in the cabin. The engines originally used by the MC-21 were the Pratt & Whitney GTF 1400Gs, but with Western sanctions affecting their access to these engines, Rostec had to turn inwards for a replacement engine. And the selected alternative for this purpose 
were the powerful Russian-made Aviadvigatel PD-14 high-bypass turbofan engines, which were first received in January 2020. One of the most innovative designs of the MC-21 has been the wings. Since Rostec was looking to compete with the modern Airbus and Boeing variations, the MC-21 needed to have some of its parts upgraded to suit modern demands. One of these parts were the wings which, in 2021, were equipped with Russian-made polymer composite materials produced via a patented vacuum infusion technology. Over 4 billion rubles, or around $45 million, were invested by Russia for the development of composite wings, and today composites make up around 40% of the MC-21's airframe, which gives it a tough but rather lightweight build. However, Despite Russia's bold move to flood its aviation market with hundreds of locally made aircrafts by 2030, there are still teething problems it has to deal with. Russia and its carriers still need to find a way to keep their existing aircrafts operating at safe conditions. Reports have it that due to Russia's inability to easily access parts for their foreign aircraft, some carriers have resorted to cannibalizing vital parts of grounded aircrafts to replace faulty ones from operating aircrafts. This has led to dozens of safety mishaps which are likely to continue as long as the sanctions remain. However, there's also been reports that Russia has managed to import some counterfeit parts for its airlines Airbus and Boeing planes. They've also resorted to using loopholes by importing vital parts through countries such as Turkey, the UAE and Tajikistan, who haven't aligned themselves with the Western sanctions. But this move has been quite costly and can barely solve the plethora of issues at this stage. There is also the not-so-little problem of certification. The MC-21300 was denied European certification on the 14th of March, 2022. And there are no indicators to point that this decision would be reversed as long as Russian troops remain on Ukrainian soil. If Russia can survive all these difficult challenges for the production of the MC-21, then they would have an aircraft more than capable of holding its own against its competitors. One of the most important recent comparisons of the Yakovlev MC-21 pitches the aircraft against the 737 MAX, specifically the MAX 9. After the recent Alaska Airlines MAX 9 door plug mishap in January 2024, Boeing's MAX lineup has once again come under scrutiny for its almost utter disregard for passenger safety. While most of the grounded MAX 9s have returned to service, the event still casted some doubts over the future of the aircraft. This uncertainty over the MAX 9 could provide the best chance of expansion for the MC-21. Because while it is unlikely that carriers from the West would adopt the MC-21 to their fleet, the aircraft is a more than capable replacement for carriers from other markets looking to expand their narrow body fleet. Starting with the costs, the MC-21310 reportedly goes for around $91 million dollars compared to almost $130 million for the MAX 9. While list prices aren't always purchase prices, you could almost guarantee that the MC-21300 would go for much cheaper than the MAX 9 in most markets. In fact, Rostec's CEO has revealed that Russian airlines would be able to get the MC-21 for as cheap as $37 million. It may be slight, but the MC-21 does have more cabin space than the MAX 9. It may not count for much in terms of swaying the decision of carriers, but that extra bit of comfort for passengers cannot be underestimated. The MAX 9 does edge out the MC-21 in terms of seating capacity with a maximum of 220 seats compared to 211, and both aircrafts are quite similar in terms of range, with both coming in at around 3,300 nautical miles. Although reports state that the MAX 9 could reach up to 3,550 nautical miles. However, the MC-21 is much more of a clean sheet design than the MAX 9, especially when it comes to the wings. And while this could be perceived as good or bad, its long-term performance could make the design type quite popular and have other aircraft manufacturers trying to adopt it for their next generation aircrafts. While the MC-21 is unlikely to make its way into Western markets, what is its probability of success elsewhere? Regardless of the MC-21's perks, it does take more than being a solid aircraft to generate sales. 
customer support, pilot training, fleet commonality and certification all play a role in airlines' decision to purchase an aircraft. And thus far, this doesn't look too positive for the MC-21's prospective expansion outside Russian soil. In 2022, Russia's largest carrier, Aeroflot, made an impressive order for 339 locally built Russian aircraft, of which 210 were of the new generation Yavkolev MC-21. And the rest, a mixture of aircrafts such as the Sukhoi Superjet SSJ-100 and the Tupolev Tu-214. These orders are expected to cost around $15 billion and would effectively double Aeroflot's existing fleet size, which makes it all the more impressive. Aeroflot also plans to make the MC-21 its flagship aircraft by 2030 and are set to begin receiving their jets by the fourth quarter of 2024. So these are some really big moves for both Aeroflot and the MC-21. As it looks like Aeroflot are taking a huge bet on the MC-21, while the MC-21's success looks like it hinges on its performance for Aeroflot. We'll have to wait to see how that goes. The MC-21-310 is also expected to come with a range of around 3,300 nautical miles. In continents like Europe, this is adequate for cross-country flights, but as Russia is large, it looks like its operations would be mostly limited to regional travel, most likely with the exception of a few countries bordering the country. There are suggestions, however, that a variant with a much higher range may be in the works. The MC-21-400 is one of the variants of the aircraft being considered for development and projections. Have it that this aircraft would come with a seating capacity of around 260 passengers and a range of almost 5,500 nautical miles, which would comfortably qualify it for intercontinental travel. But it's all speculation at the moment and Rostec is currently focused on delivering the first batch of the MC-21310 by the end of 2024 or early 2025. For now, Russian registered planes are barred from accessing the airspace for most of the West, but there's still around 60% of the world's landmass where they are allowed to fly. However, prospective customers from outside Russia would be wary of having their operations affected due to the sanctions. But for Russian-based carriers, the MC-21 presents a perfect opportunity to move on from some of their Airbus and Boeing planes. The aircraft is arguably as efficient as, if not more than, its competition and the Russian government is willing to hand out huge subsidies to make it more affordable. It looks like such a great deal from both a financial and continuity perspective, and with limited production, it looks like every Russian airline will beg for the MC-21. But what do you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, take care.